Nobody won't. Hello, everyone. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We are prepping and getting ready for this uh, second hour of uh, Cruise Control. What we got coming up, Les, BMW is going to reveal or has revealed their uh, 2 Series. And they've made it uh, kind of like a mini M Series. We'll talk yep. about that. Um, and then Ram unwraps some uh, GT models of their vehicles, of their pickup trucks with some go fast goodies direct from the factory. Always like go fast goodies, don't oh, you? Oh, yes. And uh, Ford dealers are kind of packing the... Uh, <laughs> the profit. Packing the price uh, of uh, new Broncos. They're marking them up uh, willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Yeah, I get. I guess that's the way to put it. Yeah, uh, so uh, they're doing that, and uh, also uh, we're going to talk about uh, a big racing weekend. Uh, we've got uh, Goodwood. Uh, they're going to be re racing Bugattis. They're going to also be revealing uh, a whole bunch of different cars, including this uh, uh, Lotus, two different Lotuses. And then uh, today uh, in Brooklyn, they're going to be revealing or revealing. They're going to be racing Formula E. And uh, this cool mini uh, is uh, Electric Pacer. Little concept there is going to be uh, the safety car. So a lot to talk um, about on cruise control. Tell me, Mr. New York, where in the world are they driving these things in Brooklyn? It's in Red Hook, Brooklyn, and they block off the streets and and create a course, a la wow. Monaco. <laughs> Although I don't think Monaco and Brooklyn, well, I don't think they match up. Now that uh, now that you mention it, they do say Brooklyn is the Monaco of of America. <laughs> there you go. Hey, we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Plenty to come. So we will be right back. This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine oh, wait, with hosts no, Fred Stodd and Les Cruise Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the on air. air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And welcome. Hello, everyone. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We are with you on a adventure, an automotive adventure, Les Jackson. That's what I'll call it, and we call it cruise control. We're glad you're yeah. along for the ride. And a busy week in the automotive world, wouldn't you say, Les? You are correct. I am belted in, uh, pri always practicing safety. I brought my... Uh, <laughs> I brought a, a coffee for every cup holder. <laughs> well, that's good. You're... So we're going to be having to stop quite often. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... Uh, but we do have an awful lot of stories uh, 
this hour, and uh, they're all quite good. You know, BMW uh, reveals its two series. That's the BMW two mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a lot of M in it. Yeah. Now, interesting feature about this vehicle, or interesting bit of trivia, it's actually based on the same chassis as the Mini, or the Mini's based on the same chassis as the 2. But it's not a bad thing to be based on. I mean, it's, no. uh, it's a great handling vehicle. And then Ram. Ram is uh, revealing their GT versions of some of their pickups with aftermarket goodies right from the factory who doesn't like aftermarket goodies les jackson i know you absolutely do. go fast absolutely. goodies well you know you want to you want to personalize your your ride <laughs> exactly exactly so, you know let the factory design it because it works it's guaranteed it's warranted you know yep uh, and you know and you know it's it's going to keep going that way and Bad news, and we warned you about this. Uh, some Ford dealers are uh, doing some eh, pretty serious markups of uh, Broncos. Yeah, like 20K, Les, <laughs> Les uh, Jackson. That's Don't just, buy it. Don't do it. Don't buy it. Just wait. Wait, and you'll, you'll be able to get it at least for a sticker price, if not better. But also, uh, while the weather in New York here is kind of gloomy... Uh, I, and I'm sure probably the weather <laughs> in the UK is gloomy. We're going to talk about the Goodwood Festival. Of course, uh, the Festival of Speed, FOS, as they call it. Bugatti is going to be racing up the driveway, Les Jackson, as they like to. And then uh, uh, we're going to see some new things from Lotus there as well, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then over in Brooklyn, uh, they're going to be driving these cars, the uh, Formula E cars. So a lot going on. Uh, also, they're going to pace pace the vehicle with this cute little mini electric pacer. Uh, that is so outlandish that it's cute. <laughs> All right. Well, that's how I like to think of our show. Outlandish but cute. So yes. I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. We'll be right back with more cruise control after this.
Cruise Control. Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Les, he's Fred, and uh, as we promised, uh, we're going to talk about the BMW 2, the new BMW 2 series. Two, two, two is uh, better it's than a one. Coupe. It's a coupe, and the picture we have, it's purple, which is... Uh, not the color not, you'd get. Not my favorite color. <laughs> um, but it's quite a little machine. Uh, inline six bags of power. Bags like three uh, three hundred and seventy four with in this little tiny car is great. That's right? a bag. <laughs> that's, that's a more than a pouch of power. That's more than a pouch. Um, and anyway, uh, eight speed uh, Steptronic transmission, mm -hmm. uh, three zone climate control. You know, it's really fitted out. Yeah. It is, and uh, of course, it comes in purple. One of the neat things about the uh, grill that people will like uh, is that it is small, <laughs> unlike yeah, the, the four. New, yeah, the new BMW grills, uh, not this one, but there are others. It's just, it's too in your face. Well, I have a 4 Series right now convertible in the uh, driveway. And there was a gigantic debate amongst the BMW aficionados in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the, the consensus was they didn't like it. Oh. Yeah. So um, the uh, other thing about this 2 Series is that it uh, has little air flappers on the, on the grill that help with aerodynamics. There's a lot of aerodynamics going on. This is rear drive. Now, in the past, uh, this series had been based on the same platform as the Mini, with the Mini being front-wheel drive. So I'm not sure that it is still on the same platform. But it certainly has a lot more M performance in there. Uh, they're trying to recall, I think, the 2002 model yeah, as well. And not just recent Ms, but... Uh, it is a rear-biased all-wheel drive system. I believe all of these vehicles are all-wheel drive when they come to the U.S. Uh, and even the headlights and taillights are trying to recall the old days of BMW, albeit with LEDs now. Uh, these are not inexpensive cars. While they may be, you know, one step up from the uh, starting vehicle, the 1 Series, uh, Let's look at some of these numbers. The 230i Coupe is $36,350. And for the M240i X Drive Coupe, it's $48,550. And this is not wow. even a 3 Series, is it? No, it's not. You know, give us an extra 12000 please. <laughs> exactly. So uh, it looks exciting, though. I look forward to driving it. Probably by the time we drive it, there will be that purple color. That will be the look of it. Uh, uh, you don't have to get purple, you know. <laughs> no, no, you can get other colors. You, you can get other colors. But they've gone through this thing. I mean, front and rear tracks increased uh, to make the thing more stable, more of a handling vehicle. I think the cut on this car was it wasn't BMW enough wasn't performance enough okay so they've gone through and made a lot of details made a lot of detail changes uh it's longer it's wider it's lower it has a two inch longer wheelbase um it as i said has front rear tracks increased uh which is interesting the press release just says front rear tracks are increased by a significant amount I have a feeling uh, this is going to be hard on tires. Well, probably the way it will be driven. Yeah. Certainly when you drive it, it will be. But I think. <laughs> there you go. General, that guy's being hard on tires. Yeah, that yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, pricing, though, boy, they're not shy on pricing, are they? No, they're not. They never have been. And $48,000. $48, then you add. Sales tax, yeah. license tags. Uh, 
you know, you're every 50. bit of 50,000 before you get out the door. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Now you can get the two liter four cylinder version, uh, which features a twin scroll tur turbocharger and aluminum block and alloy cylinder head with integrated exhaust manifold. Uh, do I have a number on that? Which I think would probably motivate this car perfectly. So it should. Yeah. So there you have it. A couple of cool names for colors: Thunder Knight Metallic, Brooklyn Gray Metallic, Porta Mayo Blue, and of course Alpine White. But there you have it. The BMW 2 Series released this week. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will be right back on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are glad you are along for the ride. A lot going on here. Uh, we told you a little bit about the BMW 2 Series, which was revealed. Uh, but now we're going to tell you about these vehicles. You say, Fred, what's that? They look like Ram trucks. And they are, but they're new versions out there less and uh they are the ram 1500 laramie gt and rebel gt with some uh goodies from the factory built right in yeah what do you think well this is smart on the part of the factories you know they've been watching the aftermarket make billions of dollars mm -hmm. uh, making parts for cars so they a few years ago said well you know we could do this yeah 
they have things like a cat back exhaust, cold air mm-hmm. intake, uh, a lot of parts and pieces from the Mopar performance pages. Uh, and then uh, they, the app, this is interesting, uh, there's a performance app that allows you to download real-time vehicle performance information from the timers, mm-hmm. such as zero, 0 to 60 elapsed time, G-Force gauges and engine performance can be allowed, can be downloaded to USB stick for easy sharing of driver performance. Now, uh, pretty cool stuff in a sense that uh, it, it is just another special edition from the folks at Ram. They keep the excitement going with this. Uh, but I also think it's nice that this, these trucks have been modified by the factory and Obviously, it's not going to violate any um, any kind of warranty because it's coming that way. A little bit of a special edition. Uh, you know, yeah, there's a decal. I'm never big on decals. But uh, it looks like another way to quickly get a special edition of this truck to distinguish themselves from the rest of them. Sure. Um, everybody loves to uh, personalize whatever they drive. Yeah. But by the way, the, the, <laughs> I've never heard of this, and I'm assuming it's a catback exhaust, but they call it a cold end exhaust. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a catback. I think they just. Uh, I think you're right, but we'll have to look that up. I've never, I never heard of a cold end exhaust, uh, but I heard of cold air intakes, and that it's got one of those. So. There you have a couple of special editions. Uh, If you're headed over to your dealer, you can ask them about that. But if you're headed over to your Ford dealer, Les Jackson, and you're Mm -hmm. interested in a Ford Bronco, you better bring a sack of cash, huh? Or go back home, (laughs) pack a picnic lunch, and uh, mark your calendar for November Mm -hmm. and go back. Mm-hmm. Uh, to buy the Bronco then. But right now, if you want one, uh, th- it could cost you a pretty hefty ransom fee. Yeah. Let's just uh, delve into a couple of these uh, deals, deals, deals. Perry Ford, which is a Ford dealership base in San Luis Obispo, California, has a 2021 Ford Bronco first edition in cyber orange. That's limited to 7,000 examples. Um, the MSRP is $59,115. Perry Ford hmm. says it's worth $79,115. 20K over the recommended retail price. Money in that guy's pocket, right? Pure money. Um and you know what? I'm sure somebody bought it. So, or somebody will buy it. Yeah, exactly. They're like, what's 20K? I don't know. They must have the money tree in their backyard. But yeah, um, this has happened before, of course, with the uh, Mach-E's and Ford told them to stop. Do you think they'll tell them to stop with the, uh, with the I Bronco? Think, I think Ford will probably uh, tell the dealers this doesn't make us happy. Uh, we would really like you not to do it. They can't make them do it. Mm-hmm. Cause dealers are independent business people, but Ford can, you know, put a little pressure. Say maybe they, you won't get that allocation of Broncos. Yeah. They may say, well, you know, we're going to slow down your allocations. Yeah. And they can do that. Uh, they always say the manufacturers, well, these are independent businesses. They can, operate what they want but truthfully it doesn't help the brand when you go in there no and you're like okay well i'm thinking of spending this it's like oh it's not that even even the bronco sport that you and i drove some people were asking 10k over the sticker for that that's right uh the most i remember was back in 2004 when the ford gt Mm -hmm. came out there was a dealer here in maryland that uh the price of the car the the ford gt was one hundred and fifty nine thousand. 
the dealer added 150,000 to it. So almost 50% markup. 100%. 100%. Almost 100% markup. Yeah. Yeah. And sold it. Wow. And uh, and probably if the person came in and said, well, look, that's high, they'll be like, well, no dealing, no dealing, you know? Yeah. If you want it, that's the price. Well, how about this? This is an interesting article um, I found, and, and I, I believe this was in uh, Autoblog, where they look at new old cars that are sold last month. By the way, this vehicle I'm about to mention has not been produced since 2014. Last month, someone bought a brand new Toyota FJ Cruiser from a dealer. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Apparently, this is not that uncommon that brand new vehicles just sit on the dealer's lot and, uh, and then get sold. Now, And they're not even... At least that is a vehicle that is of some interest and collectability. There were nine buyers for Mazda 2s. Remember Mazda 2? The little little yeah. car? They haven't sold that in a long time. No. Uh, and then there were also some people buying Honda Fits. And, and Volkswagen sold four 7th Gen Golf Rs. And... Uh, Honda sold 162 of those Honda Fits that have been discontinued. Uh, what do you suppose they sold for? I don't know. But the FJ Cruiser is the oldest new car uh, of 2021 to be sold in 2021. Hmm. What do you think about that? That's interesting. Would you, would you buy a car that's been sitting around for that long? I, I would. Well, if I could get a really good deal on it, sure. I bet they were selling it for a premium. Oh, the last one, brand new FJ. Yeah, probably were. Yeah, and you look at it, and it's really outdated looking, but I'm worried about it sitting around and tires yeah. dry rotting and fluids and all that stuff. It, it just seems like it might not be great, great to leave it sitting well, around. It, it again, it, it it's risky unless you know if you could buy the thing for ten thousand. But I I bet they maybe were, I bet they were asking more than that. Oh look, I'll buy this new one. Oh, you got a new car? It's only <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's eight years old. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, you're listening to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are glad you're along for the ride. Don't forget. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com where you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. A whole lot going on on our social media sites, YouTube page, and more. Cruisecontrolradio.com. Go there, check it out, and uh, check out our Facebook page. We've got a lot of, a lot of the topics we talk about on the show uh, are up on our Facebook page. If you want further detail, cars we drive, yep. things like that. Go on over there. Throw us a like while you're there. We appreciate it for sure. When we come back, we're going to tell you about this big racing weekend across the pond at the Goodwill Festival of Speed. And then right here or close to where I am sitting, uh, the Formula E race in Brooklyn. Yeah. So we'll tell you about that. I'll also have an at-the-wheel review of the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. We'll be right back.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. Les and Fred here. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, uh, right after the show, Fred, I'm warming up my Bugatti. <laughs> and because, uh, you know, the Goodwood Speed Festival is going on this weekend. Yeah. Bugatti is a uh, is one of the major brands running in it, and uh, it's only fair that I should take mine out and you know out of warm it up. Yeah, all sixteen know. cylinders of that eight liter W sixteen engine. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll crank it up to a modest oh two hundred <laughs> up the driveway. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe what you're looking at is what they call the per sport or pure sport, I guess. Uh, only 60 units will be built. It's well over a million dollars. Uh, I think more like two. Lightweight magnesium wheels with mm-hmm. optional aero blades for extra wheel ventilation and improved aerodynamics. That's probably like a $40,000 option, right? Probably. Yeah, but it doesn't have a CD player. <laughs> it does not have a CD player. <laughs> Only vans. I'm came sorry. With those I'm not today. interested. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if you spent a million dollars, they'd find one in a junkyard and shove it in there for you. They sure would. <laughs> also, there will be the Bugatti Baby 2, a 75% scale all electric Type 35 racer. I guess they're going to sell those. They're strictly limited to 500 I units. think they are, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Of course, the whole concept of Goodwood is is to race up this famous person. I forget his name. You you probably have it. His, his driveway, right? Oh, Bugatti's driver? No, the uh, driveway of at the Goodwood Festival. Who Whose mansion is it? Oh, that's right. Oh, Johnny on. Good, I'll... Johnny Goodwood, Johnny <laughs> Goodwood. No, that's a song. <laughs> uh, also, well, let's look that up. Also, this is exciting. New vehicles from Lotus. Uh, they'll be showing some new vehicles from Lotus there, uh, which I think marks the first time Lotus uh, has moved beyond the Elise in a long time. The Elise, of course, was their small mid-engine vehicle. I believe it had a Toyota engine, but now they're going to be bringing out uh, two models there. One is a hypercar and one is a little bit more um, accessible, if that is a word for uh, Lotus cars. The all-electric Lotus Evija uh, hypercar will be be making it uh, reveal there. And then the Elmira. Uh, which will be a little bit more ex- uh, accessible. And then there'll be the Elise Sport 240 Final Edition. Um, you and I drove that Elise, and man, I felt like I had to uh, really work to get my body into that, and I'm not a big guy, and neither are you. Uh, that's right. Uh, and it was remarkable how how smooth the ride was. Yes, and it didn't have a, it had a 1.5 liter engine from a Toyota, I believe in it. Yeah. With, boy, it was plenty powerful. A very, very light car. Yeah. Very, and by the way, the driveway is Lord March driveway. Lord March's driveway. Yes. So I wonder if they did that while he was alive. Did they have the Goodwood? He, uh, well, that good, he offered Goodwood his estate. Uh, for the races many many years ago mm-hmm. and did they was he alive when they did this i mean oh uh, yeah in the old days yeah yeah interesting interesting well and the driveway's what like a mile long or something like that mm-hmm. yeah and twisty and twisty so well there you have it that's going on but but over closer to where we are uh in brooklyn they will be racing formula e uh, and that's always pretty exciting. Of course, uh, around the streets of Brooklyn, they will be ra- racing the Formula E cars. Right. Uh, up the uh, David Letterman driveway. <laughs> the David. I don't think <laughs> he has a he place in Brooklyn. Where he used to get speeding tickets all the time. <laughs> On his driveway? <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere in New York. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Pacing that. 
will be a, a mini, an electric mini. That's going to be the safety car, uh, which is exciting. And uh, they're calling it the mini pace setter, which I like that name. And uh, it is the official safety car of the 2021 FIA Formula E series. That's going to cool. serve at, in the Red Hook circuit, which is part of Brooklyn. The Mini Electric Pace Setter concept. It's built around the Mini Cooper SE. And as it says right here, born out of the creative minds of Mini Design. So it looks like they've incorporated some of the, the parts and pieces from their uh, high-end performance minis and, and put them on this pace setter. A nice set of uh, flashing lights above the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think that's a great vehicle to have set the pace for an electric race, wouldn't you say? Sure. Sure. It's, you know, it's the way it ought to be. Yeah. Yeah. So cool stuff. A lot of, a lot of racing going on. It's good to see things happening again. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, we told you about Roadkill Nights and the Woodward Dream Cruise coming back. So little by little, we're seeing this New York Auto Show. We'll be covering that in August. Um, it's going to be interesting in August. I always thought it was weird when they had it, you know, ar around Easter time. So I, th I think it's better yeah. in August, don't you? I think so. Um, it's close to the new model year startup. And uh, it's just that people are more active. And you know what? It's a place to go that's air conditioned that you can go for a couple of hours. Yep. <laughs> you know, if you don't have air conditioning or you just want to get out of your apartment and you want to walk around, I think I think it could be a good idea. I guess the other idea they have to balance out, though, is a lot of people are away. So mm -hmm. but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it does. We'll report back. I'm sure there'll be plenty of automotive information to talk about. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, you're listening to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. Don't forget to check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com, uh, where you can find out about all our uh, social media stuff going on, the YouTube page, Instagram, all that and more. It's, it's right there, Les Jackson, for you to enjoy, right? Absolutely. We, um, we're we never at a shortage for for uh, automotive information. No, nope, there's a lot going on. Now, here's a here's an interesting thing. If you've ever thought about going to a driving experience, I think it's something that, you know, automotive people that love cars should do because you get to really experience this. Yep. BMW has a driving experience program at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway which is always good. I did the tour of that in the bus, which was fun. Uh, and you can actually go out there and drive. I guess you're on the infield in the road course area, but they have the M track experience. Uh, they have M track days. They have the M four GT four experience and test drive experiences where you get to drive a variety of BMW and BMW M vehicles. And there'll even be X Drive Off Road challenges. So sounds pretty exciting. It's called the BMW Driving Experience Programs at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it'd be fun to go out on the Motor Speedway in uh, one of those BMWs, wouldn't it? Well, it would. And they, you know, they have this. Uh, BMW does a good job of driving schools, mm -hmm. um, and people sh should do that. Anybody uh, who's a car enthusiast uh believes they're a good driver <laughs> would like uh, to you, think you, they're a good driver yeah you really should do it because you you'll find out that you're not as good as you think and you'll learn how to get much better and it's always good to learn something new uh and push That's yourself right. i remember going to the drag racing school and it was like wow can i do this and then at the end of the day it's like yeah i did that and and yeah. you, you feel good about yourself. You feel like, wow, I really improved or I learned something new here today. That's always something that I like to do. And if it involves uh, motor vehicles, uh, that's even better. And it's an enjoyable, it's not inexpensive, but uh, certainly a lot of these uh, schools are somewhere where 
your other half who may not be into racing could do something else while <laughs> while you do that right <laughs> well that's right and um you know over the years of course i have a, a great deal of track experience and and my wife has actually accompanied me on a couple couple of them uh not her favorite thing to do no you say let's go out for a little drive and but you're holding on to the ceiling of the that's right but, <laughs> but it's always boy that was terrifying and exciting yeah exactly exactly well you're listening to cruise control your on-air automotive magazine i'm fred staub he is les jackson when we come back we're gonna take a look at the brand new wilderness edition of the subaru outback at the wheel time on cruise control
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. It is at the wheel time. We love to do real world reviews of great vehicles. And this week, we have a great one. Uh, it is the 2022 Outback Wilderness Edition which is uh, a very, very capable version of a very, very capable vehicle that uh, you and I have driven. I mean, I've driven non-wilderness edition Outbacks through mud right up to yep, the uh, the door line, and the things just keep going. They're very, very uh, capable. Of course, they have the all-wheel drive system that is on virtually all Subarus. Uh, but Subaru said, you know what, for 2022, let's make this thing even more capable. And that's what they've done. And let me tell you a little bit about what they've done. And this is a new debut for this vehicle. Uh, they have upgraded the suspension. They've given it Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires. Advanced dual function X mode for increased capability. There's that uh, rooftop static load limit of 700 pounds uh, rack system. Probably you could even put a tent up there, I bet, one of those rooftop tents. Uh, there's this really cool stuff called StarTex water repellent upholstery. I loved it. It was soft and supple and hmm. uh, easy to clean, uh, which, which is really nice, really nice texture stuff. Front skid plate, unique exterior and interior badging ground here here we get into the real numbers here ground clearance les jackson has been raised up uh by 0.8 inches approach hmm. angle climbs to 20 degrees uh which is plus 1.4 degrees departure 23.6 up 1.9 degree ramp breakover uh, increases to 21.2 degrees. Uh, that is a 1.8 degree increase. So making this thing really a capable off-roader. It already was an off-roader. I, I liken the uh, regular Outback to like a weightlifter that wears loose-fitting clothes. And you're like, wow, I never realized that person yeah. was very fit. And now they're now they, it's sort of like the wilderness edition is the weightlifter is now wearing a tight T-shirt. And you're like, wow, that person's got muscles. They really they really are capable. Um, it uh, I love the thing. It really was a, a great vehicle to drive. And we had like a monsoon storm. And it's weird. You do feel more confident in the Subaru driving through storms. We had trees down and everything else. Um, but you feel like you can get through there. They are super popular around these parts. Um, the engine uh, is a turbocharged boxer engine. N nice air intake, by the way. The air comes right through these two nostrils under the hood. So it is a real, real functioning air intake. 260 horsepower, 277 hmm. pound-feet of torque. Uh, combined number of 24 on the highway. We got 27, so we did pretty well. Uh, as you can uh, kind of guess, it is more than just an appearance package, but appearance is part of it. There are these large black cladding areas in the front, on the front corners. And then, of course, there are these fairly aggressive fender flares uh, and black wheels. I do like the black wheels. Mine was crystal pearl white with black. So the contrast was really, really noticeable. Uh, if you get a darker color, some people might say they like that better because the dark areas don't contrast as much with the body color. All of them featured this, uh, what could I call that, an anandized gold uh, markings on the front. I think those are for the tow hooks, basically. And then you see the same thing up on the on the back of the vehicle and also up on the um, that load rack on the on the roof so it's sort of a signature gold anandized look that continues on on the inside it's on the shifter and uh, uh, other bits on the interior so that is the look of the vehicle besides those uh, more noticeable fender flares the black wheels 
gives it an aggressive look and, and sets it off. Uh, it, it, as I say, the contrast was big between the black uh, cladding and the white pearl. Great storage out back, uh, as uh, outbacks all have full-size spare in the back. Good to know, because you don't want to find out that you don't have a full-size spare. I always say, look at what you got uh, mm -hmm. when you when you get a new vehicle. Uh, good storage. You put the rear seats down. Uh, got some rear releases uh, for this, so you don't have to uh, go around front. Uh, to lower the seats. The seats uh, lower relatively flatly, and they have this great texture on the back. So if you're carrying a dog, as Subaru likes to really market to dog owners, a little quirkiness, you want to um, recline the seat. There's a separate control in the back. Uh, Subaru's always got a little bit of quirks in the back. Nice rear seats are heated, and then you get two USB ports uh, for rear passengers. So that's that's good to see. Uh, also, very cool rubber mats in the vehicle. That, that gold anan anandized look carries on on the steering wheel, on the shifter. There's some nice metal pedals, huge display. Uh, I think that's a 12-inch display up front uh, for nav and other features. Most of the controls, other than the volume and the um, temperature controls, are, are on the touchscreen, but uh, Subaru is brought out the volume control and the um, temperature controls to regular buttons. There's a little tab, sort of like a Levi's tab, Cute. that says uh, Subaru Wilderness, but uh, very good performance. Uh, on the road, a couple of things, only a couple of things I would say that bugged me a little bit. I found the steering to be a little bit light uh, for my feel. I like a heavier feel on a, on a uh, vehicle and uh that was probably my only criticism for it very capable rides a little bit stiffer although frankly the one i had may have had their tires filled up a little bit beyond what they were supposed to and then just a weird pet peeve i hate when there's a sharp piece of trim on around the door edge and you put your hand on it and you feel that sharp trim that's my own that i know that's a silly pet peeve but I have encountered it on other cars. Uh, you have an inclinometer uh, on the inside. You can see how your vehicle's doing, what the what what degrees it's rolled to. Um, very good. But really, it's it's kind of like a big station wagon, but uh, you wouldn't say that. Um, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. You have to ask yourself: Do I need the extra height? Um, do I need the bigger wheels? Do I need the bigger uh, flares? It's up to you. But uh, let's uh, let's talk price here. Uh, the pricing on Subarus is really not that bad when you think of what you get. And I'm going to scroll down here. $39,965. It's $36,995. Plus, we had the optional moonroof nav package uh, for $1,845. And destination delivery was 1125 That is the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. Brand new vehicle. Uh, brand new uh, edition of this vehicle. The whole vehicle was new in 2020. So uh, I, I give it high marks. I, I really do like Subarus. And this one is not only capable, it's even more capable than uh, <laughs> than your typical... outward uh, visibility looks real good yeah that's one of the great things about subarus they really value that and i think in many cases cuvs they go with that kind of pinched rear glass and the rear visibility goes away and i i believe in the forester they will always keep that more of a square vehicle because you that's like being in a a picture window having a picture window out back so mm -hmm. good stuff the subaru Wilderness Edition Outback. Hey, we appreciate you listening to Cruise Control Radio. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road. Bye.